You would never know by how much he's been on television over the last 25 years, but Vince McMahon has actually been trying to get himself off TV for decades. Time and time again, the Mr. McMahon character has been taken off of WWE programming, whether that be with intentions of taking a break or intentions of going away forever. Various circumstances have always brought Vince McMahon back in front of the camera, but with plenty of uncertainty in the air and his position in WWE at its most unclear since the steroid trial, that feeling that Vince McMahon will always return to TV is gone. And I, for one, am not complaining about that. How many swan songs does one guy need? This is Monday Night Raw, not the second act of Groundhog Day. Explosions, puntings, beatdowns, Phil had it worse than this. I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and this is every time Vince McMahon wrote himself off TV. But before we crack on with things, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Parts Fun Known for more lists just like this. And if you want to know more of WWE's weirdest ideas and more of Vince McMahon's stupidest thoughts, make sure to check out our list of the 10 WWE ideas that we're actually glad got cancelled. Number 10, the high stakes fully loaded 1999 main event stipulation. We start things off with the very first time that Vince McMahon decided to write himself off of television after becoming a permanent top heel in WWE. Mr. McMahon had feuded with Stone Cold Steve Austin off and on for well over a year at this point. Following a brief alliance with the two rivals against the Ministry of Darkness, the WWE chairman revealed himself as The Undertaker's higher power. It's me, Austin. It's me, Austin. It was me all along, Austin. Really funny, but it's a really dumb moment when you think about it. Austin was given the position of CEO thanks to Linda and Stephanie, leading to a handicap match against Vince and Shane. Oh, how we all wish we got a payoff to who lifted the suitcase at King of the Ring 1999, but alas, that led to the McMahons regaining power. However, Austin did give himself another shot at The Undertaker's WWE Championship and defeated him to regain the gold. This led to one final showdown between the two stars in an end of an era first blood match at fully loaded 1999 with a lot on the line. Not only was the top prize in the company up for grabs, but if Austin lost, he would never get another shot at the gold. However, if The Undertaker lost, Vince McMahon could no longer appear on WWE television. Well, Austin made the dead man bleed to win, and thus, the end of Mr. McMahon era was upon us. Hooray for all, yeah! Vince McMahon was back two months later. Yeah. Number 9, The Genetic Jackhammer. 2000 was a very interesting year for the McMahon family, on screen at least. After building an entire WrestleMania 2000 main event around their family drama with a member of the family in every corner, McMahon would fall short in his feud with The Rock and take the fall that lost the WWE Championship for the McMahon Helmsley regime at King of the Ring 2000. Following this event, Vince decided he would take some time away to have, and this is incredibly unfortunate with today's hindsight, quote unquote, as much sex as he could in the efforts of getting Linda pregnant to have another kid. This is where McMahon gave himself one of his quote unquote best nicknames, the Genetic Jackhammer. Around this time, Mick Foley was appointed as the general manager, so I am sure most of us would like to remember that over whatever reason Vince wrote himself off for. Number eight, joining the big show Kiss My Ass Club. The DX vs McMahon family feud featured a lot of ridiculous segments and attempts at comedy, like poop being dropped on Vince and Shane, as well as anything involving the Spirit Squad. To finally end this bitter rivalry, Vince, Shane, and their hired gun, the worst combination of three letters and three words in the English language, ECW champion Big Show, teamed in a three-on-two handicap match against Triple H and Shawn Michaels inside Hell in a Cell at Unforgiven 2006. This was a fun match, with HBK and Triple H being Hell in a Cell experts, while Big Show and the McMahons made ideal foils. DX then proceeded to add insult to injury as they shoved Vince McMahon's head inside the Big Show's butt cheeks and then added a little bit more injury to that as they knocked him out with a sledgehammer. This ended their feud mercilessly and wrote Vince off TV for four months. Number seven, the limo explosion. And here is the most infamous of all the Vince McMahon write-offs. 2007 was one of the craziest years for the head honcho of WWE. Starting off the year with his feud with future president Donald Trump that led to Vince getting his head shaved at WrestleMania 23, McMahon won the ECW Championship from Bobby Lashley, but he soon lost it back to Lashley a few weeks later. This made Vince depressed and led to a Vince McMahon Appreciation Night on the June 11, 2007 edition of Raw. After thanking a crowd that was booing him out of the building, Vince made a solemn walk backstage past several WWE stars. Oh hey Paul London. The chairman finally made his way outside and into his limo to close the door when the entire vehicle went up in flames. This all led viewers and even Trump himself to believe that Vince was actually dead. The company even went so far as to pronounce Vince presumably dead. However, of course, just two weeks later, the tragic events of Chris Benoit's double murder-suicide led to McMahon revealing that his death was just a storyline live on air. Number six, the money sign. 
This is one of the more outrageous entries on this list. Starting in June 2008, Vince McMahon began to give away $1 million every week over the course of several weeks on Raw, live on the air in what was called Vince McMahon's Million Dollar Mania. The concept was simple enough, with fans registering to enter a draw and would have to watch Raw for the chance to win a portion of the prize money. McMahon would call selected fans during the show where they'd be given the special password to win. If you ever wanted to see the comedy of Vince McMahon not being able to understand ringtones or how to work a phone, these are the segments for you. After several fans won some money or received some unforgiving voicemails from the chairman of the WWE, everyone wondered how this poorly conceived idea would all end. But I don't think anybody quite expected what was coming. Just three weeks later at the WWE draft, the money sign set collapsed collapsed on top of Vince, his infamous words to a worried Triple H calling him Paul of I can't feel my legs were so bad that it was laughable. Number 5 Randy Orton punts Vince Vince McMahon made his return to Monday Night Raw on the January 19th, 2009 edition of the show after Stephanie McMahon suddenly fired Chris Jericho the week prior. After making Jericho apologize to his daughter to get his job back, Randy Orton came out and demanded an apology of his own for Stephanie slapping him the prior week. Orton verbally put down Stephanie, leading to Vince tearing down Randy and his father, Cowboy Bob Orton. McMahon then demanded that Orton apologize to him, but he refused. Vince was getting ready to fire the Viper when he struck with a slap and then a quick punt to the head. The speed and velocity was amazing, making this the moment that Randy really became a red-hot heel and a character in general. It was inevitable that the Legend Killer would go on to win the Royal Rumble, which he did, and win the WWE Championship at WrestleMania that year. Inevitable, I say. Number 4, The Nexus Attack Just two weeks after their shocking Raw debut, The Nexus further established themselves when they stood in the middle of the ring with the WWE Chairman Vince McMahon. Vince kicked off the June 21st, 2010 episode of Raw by firing general manager and rival Bret Hart for not keeping order on his show after the arrival of the group of NXT rookies. Mr. McMahon would go on to be the referee for the WWE Championship main event between John Cena and Sheamus when the Nexus came down to break things up and get rid of Cena. After Vince told the seven men to calm down, he introduced them to the WWE Universe with all his usual bravado that soon disappeared before our eyes when the chairman realized what was about to happen to him. The group brutalized the 64-year-old McMahon in convincing fashion, ending with just and Gabriel's beautiful 450 splash. This would put Vince in a coma and keep him off TV. Speaking of, number three, Vince McMahon wakes up from a coma, but it was a dream sequence. Thanks to that attack from the Nexus in the summer, Vince McMahon found himself in a coma. The next time we would see the WWE Chairman was on the November 1st, 2010 edition of WWE Raw. However, it wasn't in his traditional tailor-made suit or with his signature strut to the ring. McMahon was seen in a hospital bed with none other than Freddie Prinze Jr., who was part of the creative team at the time, as his doctor. Upon informing Vince of how much his wife Linda had spent on her Senate campaign, Mr. McMahon woke up from his comatose state and was further brought up to date on everything happening in WWE. This led to Vince getting up from the hospital bed, needing to use the restroom, and revealing that he had a poster of Linda's Senate opponent over his bum. Just to put the cherry on top of this absolutely bonkers segment, Stephanie McMahon then woke up from all this to reveal it was all a dream sequence when Triple H's voice tells her that her father is still in a coma. Yeah, 2010. Great times. Number 2, Triple H relieves Vince of his duties. The WWE Board of Directors have been referred to quite a bit with the ongoing investigation of Vince McMahon this week, however there have also been various occasions that they have been referenced in storyline as well. One of those times was following the events of Money in the Bank 2011. After the excellent lead up to the event that saw McMahon go back and forth with CM Punk following his legendary pipe bomb promo and contract negotiations, Vince was about to pay off the other part of the stipulation for the iconic Punk Cena WWE title showdown as he prepared to fire John Cena on Raw. Just when McMahon was about to send the face that runs the place packing, Triple H made his return, but he looked different. There was no leather denim jacket or ring gear. Instead, the game was in a suit and informed his father-in-law that the board had relieved Mr. McMahon of his duties. The tearful departure from Vince was memorable and signaled the beginning of Triple H's run as COO as an on-screen character. Number 1. Brock Lesnar gives 67-year-old Vince McMahon an F5. At his advanced age, it was always shocking when Vince McMahon showed willingness to take any sort of offense from one of his WWE superstars, let alone a former UFC heavyweight champion and beast incarnate. However, that's exactly what happened in January 2013. After Mr. McMahon interrogated and exposed Paul Heyman's relationship with The Shield that helped CM Punk retain the WWE Championship during their introductory months in the company, Vince looked like he was about to fire Heyman. That was until Brock Lesnar made his return to WWE and proceeded to unleash his fury on Vince with a swift F5 on his poor 67-year-old hips. Luckily, this particular write-off was to undergo hip surgery anyway. This maniac took an F5 on the way out to get hip surgery. And number zero forever together? Maybe this doesn't count. Who's to say? 
Vince McMahon was not exactly written out of WWE programming on the June 17th, 2022 episode of SmackDown, but it is hard to imagine he will be seen again anytime soon. Following the announcement of an investigation into McMahon allegedly having an affair with an employee, Vince McMahon would step down as chairman, but not before getting one last extremely uncomfortable pop from the crowd. No one knew what this bat sh insane old man was going to say, and ultimately we got about what we would expect. Vince seemingly attempts to babyface himself, emphasizing WWE's then, now, forever, together tagline, but especially emphasizing together, saying we are in this together. Who's this we you speak of, Vince? Much is obviously still very up in the air with this situation and will remain that way for the foreseeable future, but it would appear that there is a real possibility that this could be the final appearance of Vince McMahon on WWE TV. If that's the case, yeah. It was about as weird as you would expect. <sighs> well, so much for that, huh? Vince McMahon couldn't even make it three days without another appearance, making an appearance on the following episode of Raw. A super totally necessary appearance that he totally had to make. Who knows what's gonna happen to the Vince McMahon character from here, but maybe this wasn't the write-off that I thought it was. Damn. And that's our list. Make sure, of course, to subscribe to Parts Fun Known if you like more fun wrestling content just like this. And if you do want to know more of Vince McMahon's dumbest ideas that never made it to TV, make sure to click the list that's floating around right here. That being the 10 WWE ideas we're glad got canceled.